Thank you very much for the introduction and I thought we'd get somebody connected with for the opportunity to say what will be very brief words. No. Uh, I've been here throughout the presentations and the presentations. I mean, most of you here are from India or have spent a large part of your life or much of your focus is been on India, and uh, I've had the special experience. I've been here for the last three years, as first as U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Uh, stunning meetings here, and, and when you were the head of the Commerce Department, you're working with businesses. So I primarily work with businesses. Uh, but I also married a wonderful woman, and on our honeymoon, uh, my wife was making films at the time. They were documentary films. And so we, uh, I took three months. She took one month, but had to go back to filmmaking. So I climbed Everest in some ways, and then I went all through India, and I got to know my way some, and that was great fun. And I've always had that in mind ever since. So this will be the third time in three years that I've been here, but these last two years have been focused exclusively on climate change. But when I address climate change, and most of my work is at Caltech, so I have an office right by the California Institute of Technology, which is generally thought of as the greatest research university in the world, and they do this work on climate change, headed by Nate Lewis and Angela and Greer, who are here with me, and uh, Andrew Spear, the World Resources Institute, were with us last week. Uh, and we went out first to talk incredible presentation of the work that's being done at the World Resources Institute. But Nate Lewis, who's the head of five faculty members at Caltech, and that's rare that they combined to that degree under one leader, but their focus is climate change, and they have the largest single grant that the U.S. Secretary of Energy has ever made in an environmental field, uh, and they're continuing to move forward on that, and the ultimate, without taking, going more deeply into this, but uh, so we went last Wednesday with Andrew Spear and uh, Liz, who's I think is, is uh, number one person in working basically in energy and sciences. Uh, and we went through labs at Caltech and uh, then we met some of, of the Caltech people who work for Nate and they're, they're just incredible people. And their view is that in the end, over time, we have the opportunity if we develop it. And here you have to have businesses integrate that we can basically by breaking down through various forms, water and sun and capture sunlight as the best and the least cost source of energy around the world with particular application here to India. And we've talked a lot about that here, uh, uh, the incredible problems with water here, the way the federal government and maybe state governments have allowed water to be taken when water is so scarce. In fact, subsidize what is a jewel here that needs to be preserved in India. So I can't say what role businesses will play here in India. I had the general view, and I was the longtime CEO of a very, very major company in basically in the U.S., but in Southern, Southern California Edison, and then I moved that into Edison International because we did the privatization of electric systems in many, many countries around the world. But the best companies, in my judgment, aren't short-term. They're not looking to make money. 
in a short term and simply get out of there. Those that are the best create, innovate, research, and build. And so there were some generalizations made in the conversation about businesses either do this or they don't do that. And I don't believe that's the case. I think the best businesses build, create, innovate consistently. And those that don't do that, it may be that their CEOs make a lot of money in the short term and walk away, but the best keep moving forward, finding ways to meet people's needs. And so I think business plays a very large role here, but you can't say businesses in general can or will lead the way with respect to climate change. The best of them will do that. And why will they do that? It's because what pe that's what people need. In other words, India will be a greater country if we can find ways to address the incredibly adverse effects of a rapidly changing climate. And the businesses can make a difference there because they have able people who are doers, who actually don't just think about the possibility or they just talk about it. They actually go out and get it done. And the best businesses then attract, by the way, the very best people. So I had the great good fortune at Southern California Edison that we, there's a long background on this, but I was kind of an environmentalist from the beginning. I was a founder of the Natural Resources Defense Council. Not many people would have thought that I would then become the CEO of a very, very major company. I didn't expect that. I wasn't looking to do that. I was actually asked to do that. And then we were able to take that further by working effectively. So I became, to make a long story short, I came to represent all the utilities, all the privately owned utilities in the United States, working with countries all around the world. So I found myself, some people were saying, well, business is just very short term, they just want to make money. I don't think that's the case, but some are. But I also think those that work entirely in public service, those work in nonprofit organizations, the key thing in my view is who are the leaders? And are the leaders credible? Do people believe in them? Do people want to work with and for them? So at Edison, what I did founder of NRDC, so I had in our offices all the time, I mean, in, the, in other words, I don't mean my personal office, they come to my office many times, but I asked that there be, for a group of NRDC people, full time on our site, because I could learn from them, and many people in the environmental community were skeptical of a major company. In the end, so the last day I was there when I stepped down and I, I stepped down and you know, I thought I'd been there long enough and I had said that to the board for a long time and they really didn't want me to step down. But the people that came the very last day to me were the heads of businesses and the heads of NRDC. And they mutually came to kind of have a special goodbye lunch gathering for me, and so it's, I really think this is all about leadership. And what Terry has done by way of creating this organization and then building the organization, and now enhancing and broadening the credibility, building these universities, and one was recognized in some way today, I don't know, Dr. Pachari, exactly what way, but it's stunning. So I think the bottom line here in my judgment, and I'll stop with this, is I think making a difference, and in my judgment, one of the most important things we've got to address, and we need to make a difference, is getting on right now, not delaying at all, on means to reduce the adverse effects as rapidly as we can of climate change. 
And I think it can be done, and I can think it be done by people like Nate Lewis, on the one hand, and truly outstanding businesses on the other, public leaders. In general, I'm doubtful about political leaders, but they can be highly credible, or sometimes, frankly, they can act so slowly and so reluctantly that businesses, in my judgment, people in the private sector, people in the public sector, need to move ahead. So the bottom line is we have to address climate change. There are businesses that can do that. There are leaders that can do that. And in some cases, the public sector in the form of governments can do it, but I'm a little doubtful there. So that's, that's all I would have to contribute here. I appreciate the opportunity to say these few words.